Hey guys, I recently started my 3D printing business about three months ago. So far I've had about five or six clients and today I'm making a video on another project that I'm doing for another client. I figured you guys might be interested to hear what I have to say about this 3D printing business and if it's right for you. So first off, talking about how did I get my first clients? Well, it's kind of like the no brainer move here where I just posted on Facebook Marketplace. I have gotten some ads taken down in the past because you're not really supposed to advertise businesses on there. However, if your wording choice is good enough to bypass the filters of Facebook, then you'll be okay. So if you get your first or second ad shot down, just change the ad copy and make sure that you don't sound too much like a business and you're actually just trying to sell a product. Another tip is to put down your credentials in your Facebook Marketplace ad. So how many years have you been 3D printing? Does your education background have anything to do with 3D printing? For example, if you're a mechanical engineer, maybe you wanna put that down. You gotta think about it from the client perspective. When they're trying to choose all the different 3D printers on Facebook Marketplace, who are they gonna trust the most? Obviously the guy who's got the most skill and does it for a relatively reasonable price. If you got an online website, an Instagram, or something else to show the work that you've done, this creates trust with clients as well. I know other people also post their services on Etsy. I haven't done that yet myself, but maybe I'll try that in the future. I do post some prints over there, but haven't had much success with sales. So when you're designing for a client and you don't actually take the measurements yourself, you have to double check or triple check with them what the measurements are. Because if you design with the wrong dimensions, then you're gonna either have to charge your client extra for a second print with a redesign or just eat the cost yourself. When you're designing for something, don't just take the measurements and run with it. You have to really consider the user experience. How is the user gonna be using this product? What's around it? What might knock it over? And how do you make it more sturdy and functional for them? Because after all, if you make your clients happy, they might come back for repeat business. So don't be afraid to ask your clients questions and get them to double or triple check dimensions or even drop the part off to you at home so that you can do the measurements yourself. If you know the product you're designing is gonna see a lot of abuse, maybe it's gonna be tossed around or hit by accident, then make sure that you account for that with wall layers as well as infill percentage. You wanna bump those up. Right now, plastic is relatively cheap usually print parts that are around 100 grams or so, which is one tenth of the roll, and a roll costs about $30. So it's really only $3 for the part, as well as time and maybe some electricity in the cost. So printing the part is not really a huge expense to you, really it's your time. So that brings me to how do you charge clients? So for me, I take an hourly rate of roughly around $40 per hour, which is what I think I'm worth. I probably could charge a bit more, however, most consumers aren't willing to pay that. Now, if it's a business that's approaching me, then I will charge a little bit higher, but for the average consumer who probably earns somewhere close to minimum wage, I'll charge around $40 per hour for design time. And typically these things that they want are more functional prints and they don't need to look super pretty. So your basic circles and rectangles and chamfered edges is all they need. So design time usually takes around maybe 20 to 30 minutes. And then for the print, I'll usually charge the price of plastic, plus around maybe five or six dollars per hour for the print, but that's only if I have a lot of jobs lined up. If the plastic is three bucks, I might charge them around $10 total if I don't have anything lined up because I wanna be able to build up customers right now. The goal isn't to squeeze every single penny out of my customers, I'll only do that if I'm swamped and I can charge higher prices. And the end goal for this 3D printing business is to actually print for other local businesses rather than consumers. Because when businesses come to you with business, then they usually want larger quantities and they'll usually be willing to pay more because this item's helping them earn revenue. So now I'll explain to you the client that I'm servicing today and the problem statement that they gave me. So essentially they have a thermos that doesn't fit in the cup holder. So they wanna make some sort of extension sleeve for their cup holder so that the extension sleeve fits into the cup holder and then widens up so it actually captures the thermos that they're trying to put in. So the first thing I asked the client is obviously, what are the dimensions of the cup holder? And knowing car cup holders, they usually taper a little bit. So when the client gave me the dimension of the cup holder, then I made sure to double check and ask, is that dimension for the top or somewhere in the middle or at the bottom? Now, because I double and triple checked with them, if the dimensions don't work out, then I would say it's on them. And I think it's reasonable for them to pay a bit more if they wanna redesign them. The next thing I had to double check is that they gave me the dimensions of the diameter, but it seemed a little too large. So they gave me 23 centimeters for the diameter of the cup holder and 27 centimeters for the diameter of their thermos. 
Now, if you think about that, 27 centimeters is about one foot. That's a pretty darn large thermos. So I was like, no way these dimensions are correct. So I had to double check with them. I was pretty sure that's a circumference and turns out it was a circumference. So when you guys get measurements from your customer, make sure those measurements make sense. Do some research online. Otherwise you could have an unhappy customer and you maybe wasted extra plastic because you printed an extra large part. The last thing that I asked for were the surroundings of the cup holder. Is there a flat surface around the edge of the cup holder or is it kind of like curvy, just like some cars have a kind of unique design. So knowing the surrounding edges of the cup holder, I can figure out if I can rest the larger diameter extension piece on there or if I have to make some sort of taper up and not rely on the surroundings to be able to support this extension. At this point in time, it's time to start catting up. And if you guys don't have a CAD program just yet, you should check out Fusion 360 because I'm gonna be doing my design on that program today and just walk you through some basic functions. Alrighty, so we are here on Fusion 360 and this software is completely free. You get up to 10 different design documents that you can edit at one single point. But if you have more than 10 designs, well, you can just click on one of these and make them read only and you can add a new design. Now, just to clarify with you guys, my client came back to me and real I realized that it's not actually for the car cup holders. It's actually for their baby seat. And we are trying to design for these cup holders right here. So if I show you guys this video, you can get an idea of what the cup holders look like. All right, so we can actually see that these cup holders are rubbery. And because they're rubbery, they do have some give. So we can always jam in this cup holder if the dimensions are slightly oversized. So going over to Fusion 360, we're gonna start by creating a sketch. Up here at the top, you have all your commands. Typically when you start your design, you always start by creating a sketch and then you'll stretch it out to be a 3D volume with one of these other functions here. So you've got extrude, which you'll use the most when you're designing. You can also revolve around an object. If you're unsure what these do, take a read. It's fairly self-explanatory. All right, so we're gonna create a sketch and you can arbitrarily choose any plane. It really doesn't matter. But for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna choose this plane here, which is the XY plane. So knowing the dimensions of the cup holder, it's roughly a 23 centimeter diameter. We're gonna create the circle here. So to create a circle, I click the center point and then you drag out. And it shows you in millimeters the dimensions. So right now we're at 64 millimeters. It really doesn't matter what I choose because we're gonna resize that by dimensioning the circle. So you can just drag it out arbitrarily. Now we have to do some math to convert circumference all the way to diameter. So the formula for circumference is pi d. So we take our circumference about 23 centimeters or millimeters. And then if that equals to pi d, we get the diameter if we divide by pi. So we got 73 millimeters, 73.2 millimeters actually. So with that, we can take the sketch dimensions and change this to 73.2 millimeters. And that resizes the circle. So this is the outer circle that's gonna be contacting the cup holder. Now I'm gonna create the inner circle because I don't wanna print a solid piece of plastic that sits in the cup holder. That would just be a waste of plastic. So I want that cup holder to have a bit of thickness, the piece that sits in the cup holder. So we're gonna dimension it. You can either click up here for the dimension icon or you can just click the D button and that should give you the dimension. Now, when you're dimensioning, there's different ways to dimension. You can dimension the actual circle itself or you can dimension a distance between two items. So here we're gonna dimension the distance between these two circles. And thinking about this, I probably can make it about three millimeters. That should be sufficient enough. And with that, we can finish the sketch. So finishing the sketch, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna extrude. So basically extruding is taking one of these 2D faces and dragging it upwards or downwards to give it 3D dimension. So this little thin circle over here, that's what I'm trying to extrude. So I can click on that and with that, I can drag this out. Easy as that. The client wanted 40 or four centimeters, so we're gonna do 40 millimeters. All right, so now we need to make the taper part and then the larger diameter. So with that, we're gonna go back to our favorite tool, the sketch tool. So this time we're not gonna sketch on one of these planes. You can actually select a face to sketch on. So I'm gonna select this face to sketch on because we're gonna be extruding the next uh, portion of this part upwards from there. So we're gonna select this face and now I know the thermos dimensions. The thermos has a 27 centimeter circumference. 
So that's going to be the inner diameter of this extension piece, not the outer diameter. Again, we're going to do our formulas and I just remembered I didn't actually have the formula in the screenshot here. Basically, I'm going to take 27 centimeters and divide that by pi to get the diameter. So about 86 millimeters. Maybe we'll give a bit of slack and we'll go 87 or I'm going to give it maybe about three millimeters extra just because you don't want to have a super snug fit. So we're going to bump this all the way up to about 89 millimeters. So the inner diameter is 89 millimeters. Now the outer diameter, I'm going to have a three millimeter wall. So we're going to add six to that because you need three millimeters for this side and three millimeters for the other side. So 89 plus six is basically 95. But the best thing is Fusion 360 does math as well. So it calculated 95 for me. So from here, what we're going to do is select extrude. And when you extrude, you can actually select multiple shapes. So here you're going to see I'm selecting this outer shape and this inner shape. And then I'm going to extrude about three millimeters again to give a base of three millimeters thickness. And here you can see I've basically created a bushing shape. And with that, we're going to now extrude another cylinder on top of this face. And that should complete the part. So here we click our, our sketch tool and we're going to click on this top face a circle and this time I don't need to create the outer circle because it's already there I just create the inner circle dimension that and that was 86 millimeters but we said we're gonna add three millimeters so 89 we can finish the sketch and now let's extrude and the client wanted nine centimeters in height so we're gonna do 90 millimeters so here we have basically the entire shape of the part but now we're going to do some final touch-ups by rounding some corners and adding some chamfers. You'll see what I mean if you don't know those terms. At the top, we're going to give it a bit of a round, so a round lip up here. To do that, we're going to go up to the top here, select fill it. In order to fill it at an edge, you're going to click on the edge that you want to fill it. And in this case, we're going to click on these two edges here. You specify the radius of the fillet. Because we know the width of this lip here is about three millimeters, we want the radius to be about half of that, 1.5. And then we'll get a nice round edge up top over here. The next thing we're gonna do is go to the bottom down here and we're gonna fix up these edges. We're gonna add a chamfer right here as well as a chamfer over here. And we'll click on chamfer and click on these edges and we'll do about a three millimeter chamfer here. The reason for the chamfer is just to make these edges not as harsh and especially this edge over here, we're going to round it a little bit and reduce the need for the amount of supports that we have on this file. Next, we're going to go up top and look down into here. So for this part, we're going to add a chamfer here as well as we're going to round this corner over here. So again, just like the usual, add a chamfer here. We'll do three millimeters. This edge here, we're going to round with a fillet. And the reason why we're using a fillet rather than a chamfer is because typically water bottles at the bottom face of the water bottle there is a bit of a round corner there so you kind of want to just sort of match that so we're going to do about a three millimeter radius and with that we've got the part entirely complete guys so all you have to do is export this now in order to export you can either go up here and use this export option but it's a lot slower here's a quicker way to export your part into an STL you're going to click on the bodies right click on the body that you want to export and save as a mesh in this menu over here, you're going to select STL binary, leave it as millimeters, and hit OK. Now we're going to select the location where we want to save it, and we're going to call this cup holder adapter. And hit enter, and there we go. We've saved the part into an STL. Now the rest of this, you guys know the drill. Just drag it onto your favorite slicer, slice it, and then drop it onto your printer. Okay, so now that we're done the design, we have to select the material. Typically, I love printing with PLA because it's quick to print and super easy and forgiving to print with. And it's also a cheaper plastic versus the other ones that I use. Now, knowing this is a cup holder extension, this piece is going to live in the car. And in the summer, cars get really warm, especially if the sun's beating down on them. And I noticed from my conversation with a customer, they said that their car is parked outside all the time, meaning that they get the sun all the way throughout the afternoon so it's going to be baking in that car. And I know that PLA does melt under heat. It can melt in temperatures as low as 40 to 50 degrees. So for this project, I'm going to choose Petchy. Petchy is a lot more thermally resistant. It can resist up to about 80 degrees. 
Now you might be asking why I didn't choose ABS, and that's because I honestly don't like to print with ABS. There's a lot of nasty chemicals and fumes that come with it, and my printer is currently inside a bedroom in my home. So I don't want to be smelling those chemicals, and unless I have a vent to be able to bring those fumes out to the window, I'm not going to be printing with ABS anytime soon. So with that said, let's go to the Adventure 3 and print that part. So yeah, that pretty much wraps it up for the design. And if you guys are curious how much I actually charged my client for this part, I charged her about $35 for the part, including design fees as well as printing time. Really, I should have charged a bit more because the print took about 11 hours, but I was only estimating about three to four. But printing with PETG, my printer, I tend to have to go a lot slower, around 20 to 30 millimeters per second, which caused the print time to go up dramatically. I also felt like it wasn't fair if I decided to charge $50 or $60 for this part because it's just a plastic holder. You could probably get a part that's fairly similar in size on Amazon. I don't know if they sell it or not, but really it only costs maybe four or five dollars to make in China. I'm still gonna make some money off of this and I can reuse this design and sell it elsewhere. If you enjoy this style of video where I break down a problem that my client has and walk through the design process and show you guys how I do it, let me know in the comments down below because I plan to make more of these videos if it interests you. I've got a couple other videos on the screen if you're interested in those, otherwise I'll catch you in the next one.